Hey, 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 Mr. War here. I don't know why I just love making that sound with my voice. Hey, are you ready for a math video? Yeah, I know I am. Hey, <laughs> hola, it's another math video with Eureka. Yes, and look at our objective here. My goodness, students will be able to compare and evaluate expressions with parentheses. Ooh, that sounds pretty heavy duty. Hmm. What do we recall? Do we re do we remember any information about what a actual expression is? Well, nine plus eleven is an expression. And do we recall what we call the answer to an addition sentence? Yes, class. That would be a sum. Our whole here appears as the sum of nine and eleven. And I have that right here. How many units is this sum being divided into? Let's see. Let's count. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. That's right. It's in four different little sections. And what is that little fractional unit called? Yeah, it's called a fourth because we have four equal parts. This is really easy. This is a little bit of a review here. Now, how many fourths are we trying to find here? Well, we're only trying to find the actual value of the three. Ah, I'm starting to see what this problem is all about. So this tape diagram is showing three-fourths of the sum of 9 and 11. Okay, now I understand that. Maybe we should write that down. I think I will. Three-fourths. Let me move that right over there. So three-fourths right here. And then I'm going to put here, this right here is the sum of 9 and 11. Now, how, how can we work and put this in a numerical expression that we have this 3 fourths, we have the sum of 9 and 11, and we want to be able to put this in a numerical expression to match these words that we have up here? Well, you might recall when we say that the sum of, we would put in parentheses. I know that some of you remember that. Cool. And then when it says, we're trying to find 3 fourths of that, and that word of, we remember that's pretty crucial. That means multiply. We could actually put times three fourths. There's our new numerical expression. That's not the only way. We know the commutative property allows us to also write it this way. Isn't that cool? One way is the second way. And we could even write it like this without the parentheses. Just show that sum. There you go, like so, and then times three. Because that, too, actually says the same thing. Now, the parentheses tell us that we're going to be adding the 9 and 11 first, and then we're going to multiply. See, if the parentheses weren't there, we, we would have to multiply first. We want to find the sum first and then multiply, and that's really important. We can find the sum of 9 and 11 first, and then divide the sum by 4 to the, find the value of 1 unit, which is what we have here. So let's go ahead and evaluate this expression. And I'm going to do that right down here. So let's evaluate. Let's take the 9, the sum of 9 and 11, multiplied by 3 quarters. We learn that we have to do what's in the parentheses first, which is 20 here. Then we're going to times that by 3 quarters. Now we can go ahead, and I like to just multiply across, because this is what this really is. This is also like represented over 1. So when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators and then the denominators. Ooh, however, you know what? Now I just noticed that we could actually cancel first, and I actually said I like to do that first too. Either way, it works out the same for me, because these are nice compatible numbers. So I'm going to write that 60 over 4. This reminds me of the clock. There's 60 minutes in an hour, so if you broke the hour up in quarters, you'd have 50 minutes in each quarter. Either way, if you cancel first, that would work. So I get 15. Nice. Boy, this was so easy. Yeah, dang, we get to go to the next problem. What do we have here? We have a zebra. Yeah, and you're here because? Wow, he's like looking right at me. Stop staring. <laughs> it's not like you don't stand out with your black and white stripes, you know. Thank you. I'll let you stay up there in the corner, though. Now we have another problem. Oh, my goodness, look at this one. Now we have question mark as our whole, and then it looks like that we have something over here, the difference of. This time we definitely don't know the whole. Uh, the, the diagram, it's like the whole is being divided into fifths because I see five equal places, uh, not fourths like the last problem. Uh, here we know what one-fifth is. It's telling us this here is going to be uh, the difference of one-third and one-fourth. Uh, we know that we need to uh, multiply the difference 
by 5 to find the whole. See, we're kind of going in reverse, looks like to me. Okay, so what I see here then is I see 5 times, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, but it's the difference. And we're finding the difference. See, now you know why I needed you out of the way there, Mr. Zebra. I almost wrote right on top of you. Okay, of, and then we're going to, of 1 third and 1 fourth. Oh, that was pretty cool. Well, now I see my five times, and when I say the difference of, that must I must put that in parentheses. So now I have one third, all right, minus one fourth, and five times. Well, parentheses I have to do what's in there first, but of course I don't have a common denominator, so I need to get one, and I need to get one fast. So I'm going to leave them in there until I determine what that is. I do believe I have a common denominator of twelve because one third is the same as four twelfths, and then one quarter is the same as three twelfths. And when you think about it, in thirds, four, eight, twelve, that's three times, and then three, three, six, nine, twelve. Five times, we have four twelfths minus three twelfths, one twelfth, and now that's gonna just be, answer's gonna be five twelfths. Nice, five twelfths. Now, I don't know, this seems really easy. Yeah, goodbye zebra. So we have the product of 4 and 2 divided by 3. Uh, let's go ahead and write a, numer a, little bit, a numerical expression for that problem here. Now, the product of 4 and 2 lets me know that when you say the product of, it's almost like we need to get that into a parenthesis here, so, and that's going to be 4 and 2. So since it's the product, we know it's being multiplied. And then here we have divided by 3. So I'm going to put divided by 3. Now, we could also write this as 4 times 2 divided by 3. means the same thing. We could also write it as, my arrows, come on. Uh, we could also write that as just like this. And the reason why we can write 4 times 2 divided by 3 is because PEMDAS tells us when we do parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract, well, technically these two guys are tied. So if it doesn't matter whether division comes first or multiplication comes first. We do uh, this operation uh, in the order that they come in. And it just so happens that multiply came first. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this expression. So 4 times 2 is going to be 8. Now we have 8 divided by 3. And then 8 divided by 3, well, we could write that as 8 thirds, which is a fraction greater than 1, also an improper fraction. You can see how many holes we have there, and I can see the 3 thirds would make one hole, another three thirds would make another hole, and I have six thirds here, and then I actually have two thirds. So what I would write that is, is in two and two thirds. All right, that's just another way to look at that. Let's go on to the next problem. Evaluate and compare equivalent expression. I want to look at these, and it says to evaluate, it's kind of like almost seems like the value, to find the value and analyze. I'm kind of curious, let me go ahead and do this first. What did I notice here? Well, if I were to evaluate this, now 2 divided by 3, remember in the order of operations, this would come first. So this would really be 2 divided by 3, which would be 2 divided by 3 times 4, okay, which then would equal 8 thirds. That number seems so familiar, doesn't it? Okay, or we already know 2 and 2 thirds. These are the same numbers. Oh, parentheses, though. Ooh, different. So now I have to do this as 2 divided by. I have to do what in parentheses first. I get 12. Of course, 2 divided by 12 can be written this way. And if I divide out a 2 on both top and bottom, I'm going to get 1 sixth. Okay, so let's look at this one. Four copies of the sum of 1 third and 1 third. So if I did this, that sounds like we're doing 1 third plus one-third, because the sum of one-third and one-third, four copies times four. Now, that's interesting. Well, one-third and one-third is two-thirds, and two-thirds times four equals eight-thirds, which equals two and two-thirds. Well, wow, that sounds familiar like that one up there. Four-thirds double. Four-thirds double, or would be times two. Again, we get eight-thirds, which is equal two and two-thirds. Ooh, that seemed to be a very popular answer. Two-thirds times four, well, that's eight-thirds. Ah, interesting. 
2 divided by 3 times 4 equals 8 thirds, which equals 2. Oh, I didn't quite get that. 2 and 2 thirds. Okay. Ah, interesting. So all of the answers were the same except for C. Very interesting. Hmm. So I wonder what the difference is about C. Oh, look at C, the expressions. Since the expression had parentheses, we had to multiply first, then divide. We talked about that. Yeah, it was equal to 2 twelfths. Hmm, it's kind of interesting. It's tricky because in expression C, all of the numbers, digits, and operations are the same as all the other expressions, with the multiplication division. But the order of the numbers and parentheses resulted in a different value. I guess the lesson to be learned here, PAMDOS. Okay, make sure that you... Do what's in parentheses first. Cool. All right. Let's go to the next problem. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Trying to make my new soundtrack. What do we have here? It says compare expressions in word and numerical forms. It says one eighth the sum of six and fourteen. Okay. I'm going to compare that with the sum of six and fourteen divided by eight. Maybe I should, maybe I should draw a tape diagram to show they sound very similar. And I'm going to make him exactly the same size, just so they're both the same. Sorry, buddy. You didn't make the cut. Sorry. Later. Okay. And, okay. Now we have the two. All right. And we need two. So this would be the sum of 6 and 14. So 6 plus 14 uh, divided by 8. Okay. So that means I'm going to need to make quarters. Then I need to make some eighths. All right. Uh, divided by 8, divided by one of these, which uh, we're not sure what quantity that's going to be. All right, that's this one. Here it says 1 eighth the sum of 6 and 14, so I have 6 and 14. Ah, how interesting. 1 eighth the sum of, we end up with the exact same tape diagram. How about that? Fascinating. They were both, so they're drawn basically exactly the same. So we don't really even need to evaluate the expressions to compare them. We can see that they will simply have the same quantity. You know, I kind of knew it. Uh, I knew it would be the same before I drew it because finding one eighth of something is dividing by eight. That's the same thing. Next on the agenda. Dun, dun, dun. We have a B and a C. Well, let's look at B. And B, what does it say here? We have four times eight thirds, okay, and then we have four times the quotient of three and eight. How can we compare these expressions without calculating, actually figuring it out? All right, they're both being multiplied by four. That that we can definitely see right here. Okay, uh, eight thirds is greater than three eighths. That much we do know. So eight thirds is greater than three eighths, and this is three eighths. The expression on the left has to be larger than because this fraction is larger. And you're multiplying, so this one's going to end up larger. Huh. So you can actually compare these without actually doing all that extra work. So I'm looking at this as I'm evaluating. You know, here, 11 divided by 2 tells you right away that's 11 halves. That's a fraction greater than 1, quite a large one. And finding half of 9, well, that's actually 4 and a half. I put 4.5, sorry. 4 and a half. Okay. So right off the get-go, minus the 2, so you can see that the right here, this one is going to be greater because it starts off with a larger number here. Cool. All right. Is that it? Is there another one? No? Who's this? Ah! Oh. <laughs> hey! Don't call me stinky! That hurts my feelings! <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, even though you probably don't think it's very funny. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Hey! <laughs> Hey, you want you want some? Uh, I'll give you a nice, really cool. I'll put some. What do they call those highlights in your hair? <laughs> All right, my friends. That's it. Short video. Huh? Sure beats that last one we had. Now, live long and prosper. <laughs>